Okay, right, we're ready. Hey guys, Ed, Auto Man Bud here. Wanna remember Auto Man? A colleague of mine today mentioned it and it brought back memories. Right back buried in my mind. Today, a comparison for you between two beastly shoes. The Puma Deviate Nitro Elite and the Puma Deviate Nitro. They're both Nitro, but apparently Nitro is not the same thing when you add Elite to it. Let's get to it. Thanks for joining me again today, guys. It's always appreciated. If you've yet to do so, please hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when I launch the new videos for you. And it helps us out here a huge amount. If you give this video a thumbs up like, danke schön. There's not much aside from an elite that splits these two shoes apart. Very different underfoot feel though. Let's venture into mountain lion territory. So two things to note here. I do own these shoes in slightly different sizes. So I have a UK 10 and a half, which is a US 11 and a half in the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. And I have a UK 11, which is a US 12 in the Deviate Nitro. I did find the Liberate Nitro just a touch long, so perhaps I could have gone for a 10 and a half in that as well. A lovely snug race fit though in this shoe. It doesn't feel uncomfortable, just a little more clingy, like an unwanted date perhaps. Something like that. A little bit more room here in the DV8 Nitro, so do be aware of sizing before dipping in to purchase either of these two shoes. I think the other odd thing here to consider is the relatively meager price increase between the two. You can upgrade from the standard DV8 Nitro to the Elite version for around about £30. I mean, it's a considerable weight decrease there and just limited drawbacks, really, in terms of the additional cost. It just makes it even harder to fathom, really, where Puma are coming from with that. We will start with the uppers first. So a much thicker upper here on the DV8 Nitro, closer to a more standard trainer feel. The mesh is containing, but while still being very flexible. Certainly in the front of the toe box is where you feel it the most. There's a little bit more height, I think, due to the more structured material that they've used here in the upper. I think the only minor gripe for most people with this shoe in terms of the upper is that heel area. At times it did cause a little bit of rubbing for me. That does seem to have disappeared after I've got a few more miles into the shoe, but for a few people that was a deal breaker and it meant the shoe just really wasn't workable. I did snip either side of the left shoe and that seemed to completely alleviate the problem for me. My left foot's a little bit shorter than my right foot so I think perhaps if I'd gone down half a size, it might have solved it, though the shoe wouldn't have been anywhere near as roomy. Don't go snipping your shoes, guys, unless you really need to. With the more hefty upper, I found I had to cinch the laces that a little bit more. That got the shoe to lock around the top of the foot properly. That isn't the same in the Nitro Elite. A super flexible upper here on this one, guys. It barely feels, in fact, like there's anything there on your foot. You have to look down to check every so often. I'm still wearing shoes. Such a huge difference really between the two uppers here, it's hard to spot any similarities. In use, you can bet that the Nitro Elite is super breathable. I think if you took it out on a cold winter's morn, you'd know all about it. Of course, that's ideal if you're running in very warm weather. If you live in one of those type of climates, your quid's in. Let's not forget though, winter's on the way, and I knew all about that this morning. Absolutely saturated once again. Certainly, getting colder here and this shoe demands really a nice thin sock. It makes you want to run fast, you don't want to put a big thick grandma sock on on this one. In terms of comfort and purpose it's hard not to go for this shoe really in terms of that meager cost increase. Hugging no frills comfort fest. And the only minor bugbear is the tongue slide which I alleviated using some other socks. So a win for upper for the Deviate Nitro Elite. We're talking midsole now. So aside from rigidity given by that inno plate that's embedded into the midsole of both shoes, there's again not a lot of similarities here, I have to be honest. From viewer accounts here we have nitro infused foam, though if I'm going to be super critical, I think the heel slip in this shoe was down to the super rigid nature of the midsole foam. It's just such a high rebound type feel. I almost felt like my foot was flying out the back of the shoe. It was just so much harder to lock in. I don't know why, but it really was hard to dial in in terms of lacing. I did note that one reviewer out there on the internet mentioned that the midfoot lockdown was amazing, but the heel slip was terrible, which is a 
baffling contradiction. I just don't quite understand that. I think it's absolutely a byproduct of that super rigid plate and the lack of lock around the top of the foot. The nitro infused PBAX foam here in the Elite, more forgiving and wickedly light. Really great out the box where I found the Deviate Nitro just needed a little bit of braking. A little bit less rebound here, something a little closer to Fuel Cell or Zoom X perhaps. I think the Deviate feels a little bit closer to something like DNA Flash from the Brooks shoes or maybe the older Fuel Cell type feel that we had in the original New Balance Rebel. Here I think the use case is very important guys when we're looking at midsole. Lighter runners will no doubt favour the fresh feeling that they get from the Nitro Elite and I'm starting to see little point at the moment between some variations of shoes that are for training and racing you get these like race versions and daily versions i mean something like that stink fest there it's just not necessary now i think the upper and midsole differences are so small between some of the manufacturers shoes that they just don't really warrant having different models it's almost like people are creating heavier hamstrung training models which are a little bit cheaper to try and get the sales. Like they're throwing mud at the wall, just covering all the bases. Why make those hamstrung options that are just so much heavier? Nobody wants them anymore. At pace, I have to say the Elite is just miles better. Perhaps bringing this one out the cupboard when weather is more cruel and taxing. You know, as we head towards winter, I think the midsole might just sort of come into play there rather than destroying your nice race shoe. Though time will tell, maybe that won't happen. Maybe it won't fall to pieces. Maybe it will carry on being just as good as it was when I took it out of the box. Who knows? In terms of midsole though, if I could only have one, I'd have to go for the Nitro Elite on this occasion outsole now so puma grip on both of these shoes guys although the lug depth is a little bit deeper here on the dv8 nitro a little bit shallower here on the nitro elite it's actually most noticeable in the heel area of the shoe really it's quite a bit more depth here hard to call a winner really they both offer some superb grip i guess over time the dv8 nitro is going to probably last that little bit longer i think that most shoes midsoles will wear out before the outsole goes though i think if you're looking at bits hanging off of the outsole then your midsole went a long time back puma grip is proving a superb outsole material in very wet conditions reliable and provide some great traction on all sorts of different surfaces none of the puma shoes in my collection are showing any real signs of outsole wear so i think i'm gonna to have to call it a draw on outsole on this occasion this little in it between these two i've used them on their natural habitat which is tarmac road pavement concrete few other manufacturers models come close right now to puma grip value now i've got to be honest now guys value wise i see very few reasons why you should pick up this shoe and just go with it perhaps if you're a heavier set runner it might work a little bit better for you slightly less squish although there's lots of rebound and bounce there perhaps if the elite is your race shoe you've already picked up you could train in this but i don't really think it has the same feel as the deviate nitro elite they've shared names but there's not an awful lot in common really i think if you want a shoe that's just closer to the nitro elite you could pick up the liberate nitro it's practically the same upper and a more similar underfoot feel for a fraction of the price as well i think it makes a better companion to this one although it is plateless i suppose but the plates aren't everything are they i know there was a study the other day that showed actually the plate doesn't make all that much difference and it's all about the foam so there we are i think the 30 pounds extra on top of the deviate nitro is absolutely worth it on this occasion so save up some extra earth credits and bypass the deviate nitro for this one the elite foam and the better upper is just worth it smells good as well have you picked up either of these guys what did you make of them did you get that heel slip issue in the dv8 nitro have you been enjoying the smell of the nitro elite let me know down in the comments musical interlude coming your way we're going back to 1997 now guys for supergrass in it for the money supergrass i always enjoyed their sound nice and simple and direct bass drums guitar and organ it's all a runner needs Track two on the album, Richard III, is a surefire winner. You can almost hear them turning the dials 
and pressing the switches and the electricity flowing through the group. Sun Hits the Sky was another winning track on this album. I think I have the single for that, the CD single. Remember those? Late in the Day was another great track. They really hit form on this album. Remember some really nice tunes, really good sounds and well produced. I particularly like the album cover as well with the three members of the band busking on the front. Transport yourself back to 1997 and check out this wonderful album from Supergrass in it for the money. A few of you have been asking about Beast. Beast has been exiled from the shoe sanctuary because she knocked over about 30 boxes the other day. She will be allowed back in soon when she can prove that she can behave in an appropriate fashion around running shoes. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video, guys. Always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos for you. Have you done it now? It really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.